Look, let's just be honest with each other. There is nothing I could have put in the title of this video, in the thumbnail picture, or in the first 15 seconds of footage like this. couple of shots about where they landed before I'd say nothing too extremely good there but there were also a lot of shots that came all the way out here this time that is a quite substantial difference compared to the first firing footage that is that is a big range upgrade for basically no effort whatsoever that would make you click on a video on the Nerf Zombie Strike Rev Reaper. Everybody already made their opinions on this, and I have never taken a look at it until about now. And I should have listened to Buff Daddy Nerf sooner. The Zombie Strike Rev Reaper is a really good blaster. It fits a cool niche. It works surprisingly well. And it's one of the easiestly modded blasters I've ever seen. It's this mod is this is what makes me love Hasbro's a company. So it, it's bizarre. Once I show you inside and I talk about this thing, it's going to blow your mind because there's so much blatant stuff that's going on here. It's amazing. So yes, the 2018 Zombie Strike Rev Reaper. What is there to say? It is a manual flywheel blaster. You pump this thing and it makes a worrying sound with a bunch of gears and clicking that manually spins two small flywheels. Very, very small flywheels. They're basically like the same size as like the new Hurricane flywheels, those like tiny micro ones. And it's manual and it's geared and who really cares? I mean, it fires whenever you pump it. So if I kind of show you down in the mag, you can see that is the pusher right there. But it does hit average elite ranges. I mean, actually, it's hard for me to chronograph, but I've had this thing hit above 90 FPS multiple times before. It is actually a really good blaster. And yeah, it doesn't have a trigger. It's not going to do your crazy, like, ah, oh, I have an HPA primary. I can hit whatever FPS I want. I don't even need to carry a secondary. I'm just that good at the game. I can do crazy tactical reloads while somersaulting over cars and stuff. I'm just the best player that Nerf has ever seen. If you're one of those people, you're not even watching this video, so I don't really even care. But for those of you that are watching this, you've probably figured out that the Rev Reaper has something going on because I'm doing a video about it. And the Rev Reaper, not only being a little bit hotter than a stock blaster typically is for nerf, although you could just get like a dart zone blaster that is, you know, electronic flywheel. The point is the design has some things going for it. It is incredibly thin. And while it is a top-fed blaster, again, I think they were just going for that incredibly thin profile. And it works really well. It's got a single sling point up here, although I guess you could use something down here as a sling point. A very comfortable grip and a vertical foregrip. That is how you prime the thing. Now, if you are rushing with a blaster like this, which is a run and gun style is what this kind of blaster is really good for, you're not going to miss that trigger because as you're running, you can hold this thing and you can just bump it and you're probably going to hit a man-sized target at a reasonable distance. That's what this kind of blaster is made for. It's got a jam door on the side of it that is really loose and kind of garbo, and I don't even know what the point of it is, but you can kind of see it right there. There we go. But there's something you might have noticed every single time I prime this. It stops in a really weird place. It goes almost all the way back and then completely stops. And that's where this starts to get really interesting. I don't know how many people have actually taken apart a Rev Reaper, even know you might have, if you've been around in the ecosystem for a while, you've probably seen people talk about this. But if I have the pleasure of showing you what the Rev Reaper is actually like stock, you're in for a treat.
There we go. This thing has an annoying amount of screws in it. So right off the bat, here's your magazine catch right there. It's really, really simple. Here is your flywheel cage. It is open, as you can see. It's all kind of geary and weird. The first thing I really want to point out is we're going to look right here. You see, this is a stop that prevents this from moving back. There's also a stop right here. And the weirdest part is that you can see, very blatantly, there's another little piece behind it that is empty. And if I were to remove this little rubber stopper right here, they're identical. In fact, I can take that exact rubber stopper and I can move it back like so. And then this little spot right here, I mean, that's obviously what's going on here. This is kind of weird. It's almost like this blaster was too powerful stock and they had to tone it down at the very last minute. Because if I were to take, let's say, my very trusty plastic snips, and I were to do something crazy, like let's start with just removing this stop entirely. Well, that'll be fun to find in a second because I do actually need that little dampener piece on it. And if I were to go down here and actually clip out this as well, Now, this pusher can go all the way back, and it hits this other stop right here, which wasn't even being used before. It doesn't actually do anything. And that's where things get a little bit crazy with this entire blaster. It was toned down, and yet all they did was kind of shift a part spot back. That's it. That's all they did to make this thing a little bit weaker, because now you get the full travel and you'll get a lot more power out of this blaster, which just is incredible that this is this blatantly nerfed. It's very simple to modify, and now you'll get a lot more travel, which means more speed, which should mean the darts will fly further. And we'll test that, because I'm actually really interested in how this thing performs once modified. But that's it. That's all you have to do. And I honestly wonder how hard it hit before, they had to tone it down. Could it really have hit that much harder? Like seriously, it's like they blatantly had to redo some pieces in order to make this happen. So how hard was it hitting? This is how it was originally designed and let's find out. Let's put it back together, run some darts through it and see. You are gonna wanna keep this little adhesive pad just because we don't wanna snap this piece off while wildly pumping the thing. But that is the complete mod. First couple of shots, about where they landed before, I'd say. Nothing too extremely good there, but there were also a lot of shots that came all the way out here this time, and that is a quite substantial difference compared to the first firing footage. That is, that is a big range upgrade for basically no effort whatsoever. I'm sorry I can't give you more concrete numbers because these things are just impossible. There's so many variations going on, it's nearly impossible for me to correctly chronograph them. My Caldwell would be my best bet and it doesn't seem to want to chronograph anything right now. I'm not quite sure what happened to it and trying to feed the darts through this thing just isn't possible. But it 
is more than comparable after a light modification to one of these stock dart zone blasters. You do tend to angle your shots with this thing automatically just on the virtue of how it works, but it is definitely war worthy. In fact, if you wanted like an HVZ blaster, these things are 15 bucks. You can use whatever magazine. It's actually one of the only flywheel sidearms that uses a full magazine that I would ever remotely consider using because of just how it works and how easy it is and how thin it is. I think the size of the shell is very important. It's not much thicker than the magazine itself. And I'll tell you why I'm bothering to do any of this other than, you know, hey, the Rev Reaper is actually really good and really easy to mod. And that's, I really want to get, and I already ordered two more, they'll be here tomorrow. I'm gonna get two more Rev Reapers. I'm gonna bolt all three of them together, which still wouldn't be that thick of a blaster. I'm going to remove the grips off two of them, one on the left, one on the right hand side, and I'm gonna bolt all the priming mechanisms together. I'm just gonna remove the two grips, I'm gonna run rods through it, I'm gonna make all three of them go on the same prime. And my idea is, it's going to be a really easy, really effective manual flywheel shotgun thing. And I have a feeling it's going to work and it's going to work really well. Three darts, three magazines. I it, This should be a really cool mod. So make sure you stay subscribed for that. I'm hoping it works out. I might have just wasted a bunch of money on Rev Reapers, which is uh, otherwise a really kind of gimmicky, but interesting and usable blaster. Is it going to set your world on fire? Probably not. Again, performance now is comparable to like a flywheeler from Dart Zone, but it's a very satisfying blaster to use. It's very easy to modify. It is really compact for what it is. I can't explain that enough since the flywheels are small and they're all geared. You don't have to worry about big motors or batteries or anything getting in your way. This thing works extremely well for what it is. Yes, if you wanted to put a flywheel cage in it and make an electronic blaster, you could most, I mean, you could do that with anything. Flywheels are great like that, but that defeats the entire purpose of this blaster and this mod. So I'm gonna say if you have a Rev Reaper, you've never opened it up, you've never even tried or you've thrifted one, definitely do this modification because it takes you minutes and it's very simple. And I'm gonna play around because if I can get this triple Rev Reaper thing working, especially with how easy I think it will be, this blaster will be irredeemably cool. Absolutely awesome, and I'm super stoked to get around to doing that. But even just with a light modification, this thing is definitely war worthy and practical if you can get past how it functions. But let me know what you think about the Rev Reaper down in the comments section below. I'm really interested to get your opinions because I happen to really like this blaster. But other than that, I'm Walcom S7. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to get your name on my workbench with all these other beautiful people and a couple more that I still need to cut out and print out, there's a link in the top right corner or in the button description or in the pinned comment to my Patreon where $5 or more a month gets you a bunch of perks, but one of them being getting your name on my workbench. So please check that out if you're interested in supporting the channel or just use the Amazon affiliate link down below when you buy your Rev Reapers. That also really helps. But of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different video. Can't you see I'm blazing? Still my heart is blazing. If the words kill me, I don't need.